In the game I'm working on, I've just installed the new conditions module, and I want to implement it with some magic spells. So I have this magic book of cunning in my inventory. I'm going to learn the spell this here. Coming handy. And then I'm going to try to cast the spell. I'm going to cast it on this first player here. We can see there's an effect. Uh, the spell seems to cast, but if we check the stats, there was no change. Now, I didn't show the stats earlier, but there was no change because I haven't added any conditions to the magic spell yet. But of course, the cunning spell should have some effect. So I'm going to start by creating a new folder and call this conditions. And inside conditions, I'm going to create a folder and we're going to call this buffs. Underneath buffs, I'm going to click create, game modules, create condition, and call this cunning. Under main settings, I can change the display name, can say whether this can stack or not, and I can set the level. So we're gonna set the description here real quick, and we can start by saying the time that this condition lasts. Now it's not an instant condition, it lasts a certain amount of time, and we're gonna say that it lasts 10 minutes, and then we're gonna say the mind magic um, stat, if the caster has this stat, uh, then we're also going to add a an additional minute, or we'll say an additional two minutes per point in the skill Mind Magic. And that's what's going to set the time. We're not going to worry about the lookup table option. There is other ways to add and augment how long the condition lasts. But in this case, we're just going to use a 10 minute flat plus two minutes per skill point in Mind Magic. Uh, there won't be any effects on points. This is a, um, a periodic effects like poison or healing over time. You can set that here. Um, or if it's a single instant spell like a damage or, or healing or something like that, then you can set that here as well. Instead, we're going to go into their stats and we're going to choose the two stats that we want to uh, modify here, in which case it's going to be luck. We'll add that. And we're also going to update the wisdom stat. So we'll add that as well. So we're going to do something similar to time where luck is going to get a bonus of two and wisdom is going to get a bonus of four. Then we're going to choose a new source. In this case, we're going to be mind magic. And we'll add that. And then based on the final points in mind magic, we're going to add additional value to this. Uh, we will add an additional 0.5 to luck and one to wisdom for every point in mind magic and the skill points of mind magic. So the character has the mind magic skill and they're at level four. This would be a total of eight uh, wisdom to be added to the recipient of the condition cunning. If the caster does not have mind magic but is still casting cunning for some reason, uh, perhaps they're using a magic spell or a scroll or something like that, then the final value will be four because they don't have mind magic and therefore this value will not be added to the total. Now we need to make sure that this condition is added with the spell itself. I'm using the items module to work with my magic spells. So each magic spell is actually an item object. And so cunning is one of those spells. We've got um, all the details set up here as, through the item object module. And in the dictionaries, we're going to add a new dictionary. So I'm going to click on Manage Item Objects. And we are uh, selecting all Mind Magic. I'm going to copy this to all the other magic types too. I've separated my item objects into individual types of magic. You might not do that. Maybe you just have all of your spells under the same type. Uh, however you want to work, that is completely up to you. And we're going to call this Condition. We're going to add that to all Mind Magic. And now we're going to expand this and select the condition as the exposed value for this key condition in the dictionaries. And now back in my inspector for cunning, uh, we can see that we have the condition exposed here. So I'm going to select this and select cunning. Now, if I did have multiple conditions that I wanted to apply in a single spell, uh, you could simply add uh, new rows here. This is just a list and uh, add them all there. So the next step for me is to create new code in order to make sure that the condition is added to the player who the spell is being cast on. I did make a slight mistake. Turns out I forgot that in my game I've got the actual spell data uh, based on the mastery level of the caster. 
And so we've got novice, expert, master, and grandmaster in that order for expertise. And that's where I'm actually going to be adding the condition to this uh, spell, which is an item attribute, not the item object, which holds the main spell. That way I can have a different condition for each of the different mastery levels. So first in my player class, I'm going to make sure I implement I have conditions and I'm going to ensure that I have all the missing members attached to this. Now, not all of these have to be used in all cases, but if you would like, you could copy what we've done in the demo for the conditions and copy the methods that make sense. So the first thing is to make sure that we have a place to store the conditions. Uh, it's very similar to the other uh, game modules. We have a public game conditions list and we're gonna call this conditions. Now I am going to copy some of these from the demo. Uh, for has conditions, we just need to call conditions and try to get the UID. If we are able to, then this will return true. Otherwise it will return false and that's whether we have the condition or not. In this case, this player is not intended to give the condition to anything else. Um, now there could be a use case for that. Perhaps there's a magic spell that transfers all of one player's conditions to another player or an enemy or something like that. But for right now, I'm going to ignore this one. And then I'm going to copy and paste some of the other ones uh, from the demo scene. And we're gonna speed up the video during this. And one thing to always remember is to add the tick for conditions. Tick is like the update but for a non-mono behavior. So since conditions, stats, skills, spells, all of these lists are not uh, mono behaviors, they don't have an update. So instead we call tick from our update loop and you could do the similar for late update and that will call the tick method on the game condition list. In the casting flow shown at the beginning of the video where we cast a spell from our spell book onto a player, I'm using the cast spell on deck on player method in my actions class. And there's a spot here for conditions that has yet to be populated. So let's go ahead and do this. Now keep in mind, this is something that you would code for your own project because every project is different and how you've set up your project is going to be different than mine. And so this step, uh, how you use the data set up in the game modules is really entirely up to you. You're welcome to steal from me, but I do expect that most users of the game modules will do their own implementation of the data. Now, I also stole this method from the demo scene for conditions as well. In this one, we're going to first set the new owner as the new player. In the cast spell on deck on player method, we're passing the integer the index of the new player from the player's list. In this case, we're gonna then create a variable called new owner uh, from our game data players of that index. And then we're going to create a new game condition. And to set this up, we're gonna pass in the condition that we have from our conditions list. We're gonna pass in the new owner, pass in our caster, in this case, it's the active player, and then also pass in the game time. This is important because conditions expire and they do this automatically and they keep track of their own time. But in order to do this, you do have to pass in game time. Now, if you're not using the game time module, then you'll want to handle this differently, probably passing in your own uh, time keeping uh, variable here, a float value for whatever time it is now. And then finally, we're going to pass it to the target by just saying new owner game condition and pass that new game condition in. Now, game condition is also something that we have to copy from the demo scene or create your own method if you, if you choose. So I'm just going to copy this and paste it in and we will update it as needed. So first we're gonna be using the transfer method. The transfer method will take in an entire existing game condition, whereas the add method uh, conditions.add would create a brand new game condition from scratch and it wouldn't have necessarily all the other information we've added to it. So transferring is for passing an entire pre-computed or complete game condition where add is to create a brand new one from scratch. Uh, and then we're also going to set the stats dirty for all of the modification level targets. Um, on that condition. So that condition, you know, in this case is going to affect luck and wisdom. So those stats need to be set dirty. And then we're going to try doing instant actions. Now here's a method that uh, is optional. I am going to use it 
because later I'm going to want uh, this this method, so I'm going to copy it for now. But this is optional. Uh, you can have it if you need it, or you can create your own if you'd like. And then if you do need something uh, to work with the new game condition that you've transferred over, we're going to return that. In this case, we don't need it, um, but this will add it to the list. And just to show that the set stats dirty is going through the entire list of stats that's being passed into it. And then for each one, we're going to call set stat dirty one. And if the character has, if the player has that stat, uh, we're going to get the game stat and then set it dirty. And that forces it to update on the next frame. And the one other thing to make sure we add is the repositories. Uh, each one of these game modules that relies on the scriptable objects will use a repository prefab that contains links to all of these scriptable objects. So now in play mode, we can see that my game data players element zero, which is this first player on the left, has no conditions. So let's go ahead and cast cunning onto that player. So now they have the condition cunning. And if we look at it, I'll pause it for now. We see that it has an end time of 238.206.5. And if we go to our game time, we'll see that the time now is 238.196. So when this gets to 206 in about 10 seconds, it should delete from the list automatically because we are calling tick. And that tick handles all the removal of the game stats over time but nothing happened and that's because i forgot to pass game time now into the game conditions list and we can do that in the tick by simply adding game dot now of course if you're doing your own implementation of game time uh, then you would pass your own time and that will update it so that the conditions list knows what time it is and knows how to handle things based on that time. We also need to remember in our get other levels method, which is required by the stats module, that we need to pass in all of our game conditions and the modification levels attached to those. This is the same thing we do for our character class, our character race, character gender, each of which is a single uh, uh, object that has modification levels. And we're gonna do the same thing for all of our equipment, and all of our equipment that's in uh, on that's already equipped, uh, so that all of the player equipment spots, which for this project is the stuff that the player has currently equipped on their body. So now we can see in our inspector here that the player at element zero, which is this one on the left, does not have any conditions. Their luck is 11, and wisdom is 8.8. .8. So let's go ahead and cast that spell. First, we'll learn the spell These again. And we will then cast it. And we see that now Cunning is on the character. So let's go ahead and load up her stats. And we see that her luck is now 13.5 and wisdom is 12.8. So both of those have been increased. And if you look at the end time here, this is 238.210 and our current game time, this is the game time module here, um, is 238-200. Once I unpause the game here, this should remove itself. All right, so the condition has been removed and that's all there is to it. There's more documentation and tutorials on infinitypbr.com, so don't forget to like and subscribe. You know, come to the Discord if you have any questions. There's a whole lot you can do with the game modules bundle. Uh, they go way deeper than you know, the surface of just items and objects and conditions. There's a heck of a lot more you can do by mixing and matching and using them in unique ways and using the dictionaries module to add a whole lot of new functionality that's very unique to your project. Uh, the intent, of course, is that you should be able to do anything you want using these. Uh, and they shouldn't limit you to creating your game in any particular style so that you can create the game that you want to create. All right, thanks. Have a great day.